Hi folks, my name is Matthew Harris and I'm a senior scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture in Australia. Today we're going to be looking at MET files in this webinar in APSIM Next Generation. Uh, APSIM MET files are on a daily data. They require maximum minimum daily temperature in degrees Celsius, rainfall in millimetres, vapour pressure in hectopascals, uh, as well as a few other data. And we'll go, we'll go through these shortly. So the MET data or the weather data is in this third tab under the simulation tree. Here I've just opened an example uh, and to do that you just hit open an example, uh, go to your C drive, program files, AppSim folder and examples, open up any one of these examples. I've done that uh, and I've, I've saved it and I've ran it just to make sure it would run. So save it to your one of your own directories, it won't run from the example file. Click on weather and then it will show you a long-term average weather uh, climate data for the location. You should always do this as part of good practice. So the location we have is Lincoln, which is in New Zealand, which is the southern hemisphere. You should expect the temperatures, maximum and minimum temperatures, to be minimum in winter, which they are, June, July, August. You should expect rainfall, and, and you might need site-specific uh, lo local no knowledge to know what rainfall would do. but you would expect more rainfall in the winter in New Zealand and l less in the summer in the southern island, in the South Island at least. So it's showing over the long term these bars are slightly higher in winter, <coughs> excuse me, which is very good. Now, here it shows you some uh, information about the weather file, where it's from. So this is the directory. This is the latitude, so it's negative 43 degrees below the equator. Average temperature, the amplitude of temperature, and the duration of the climate period. So it goes from the 1st of the 1st, 1960, to the 1st of the 4th, 2008, and that's in day, month, year format. Uh, and then it shows you the long-term average rainfall for the site, as well as the standard deviation. If you go to data, it shows you the actual data that APSIM will read. So it needs all of these in this format. Date, rain, max temp, min temp, mean, radiation, wind speed, vapour pressure in hectopascals, and Q max. Rainfall is in millimetres. Uh, and then if, if any one of these values are missing, Epson will throw an error. Then you have a rainfall chart, and you can show multiple years. You can start at different years, or you can show multiple years. You've got, excuse me, monthly rainfall. So it's showing you the cumulative monthly rainfall and the long-term average rainfall for four years. And that changes according to how many years you want to put in long-term average temperature, and radiation. So radiation is very important to check, is it exhibiting that seasonal cycle? So depending on where you are relative to the equator, the further you are from the equator, the greater this sinusoidal cycle. If you put two or three years in, you'll see it much more easily. So what it's showing at, at the end of the year in summer, in the southern hemisphere, we have a peak, which is good. In the middle of the year, which is in the southern hemisphere, which is winter, we have a trough. So in general, if you've got a solar radiation of about 30, that's a very hot, sunny day, 30 megajoules per square metre. A very cold, wintry, overcast day is less than 5. If you've got a value that's well over 30, like up to 50 or something, there may well be something wrong or your units might, for radiation might not be right. So very important to check that. The other point is that if you're above the equator, uh, this trend will be reversed. So you'll have your summertime in the middle of the year, your winter time at the end of the year, December, January, February. So these are, this is Southern Hemisphere. Now, these MET files are very specific and detailed, and so you might say, well, how do I actually get detailed data for my site? To do that, APSIM has got this neat little facility where you right-click, you go Download Weather, uh, and then you put in your latitude and longitude. Uh, now, so for this example, I might just do... So this is Southern Hemisphere, uh, and for Australia, you have this what's called silo data, but that's only for Australia. If you go to the world, they grade out, but you can use this NASA power data. So if we had a site, for example, in the northern hemisphere, and we might say, for example, Kathmandu, which is something like 27.7172, and then 85.324 east. And then you might say, well, have I got that right? So you can hit this button here, get place name for location. Yes, it is right. You have to put in your email address. Uh, now, the more, the 
greater the duration you put in, the longer it takes to download. So to make this relatively quick, I'm just going to put in a relatively short duration uh, because otherwise we'll be waiting forever in a webinar which might not go down too well with many viewers. So we'll just go a, a relatively short period um, and then you have to save it to a specific directory. Um, we'll just save it to this one here. Uh, I just had an example there, so I just stated an example, but save it to your AppSim file. It always populates it with this .met file. Hit OK. And it always takes some time to get this global data, depending on the day, the internet, uh, how you feel. Now, what this has done, as you notice, because we've got a Northern Hemisphere site, don't worry about this here. This is just a little plotting blip. Uh, it's actually shown that, yes, uh, we have reversed it, so we've got minimum radiation at the end of the year and maximum in the centre of the year uh, and similar so that's maximum radiation and this is the actual daily radiation now let's actually t check temperature that follows a similar trend which is good saying summertime in the centre of the year winter in the middle uh, and rainfall rainfall is difficult because unless you have site specific knowledge of because it could be summer dominant or winter dominant so that looks good and then you can see if it will actually run just right click and hit run apps in, and it doesn't run because we have uh, we have a specific format in the met file so you should go back and actually find out about that error and correct it but in general that's how you get different weather data uh, for different weather files for sites that you may not have measured data for that's it for today thanks for watching